This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back. Looking at longer two. This is part two. It's a case study looking in more detail at the international date line. It's the line that separates calendar days uh, from, let's say, Sunday to Monday. And it is an awesome thing because it's not as easy as you think. And it is contested by various countries. So we're looking at reviewing the prime meridian and how it relates to the international date line. Uh, the establishment of this line and who established it and when and why doesn't this line follow the 180 degree um, line of longitude or meridian and why is it um, zigzag and sway off course so as a recap we have the uh, definition of uh, lines of longitude right here is so the angular angular distance east or west of the prime meridian. So looking at east and west, we're looking at time as well. As the Earth spins counterclockwise from west to east, obviously the sun is in a fixed position, and some areas are in sunlight, some areas aren't, so day and night, based on the axis spin, which is 24 hours, or actually a bit less, actually 23 hours and 56 minutes, so we get, so we get leap years from that. Um, and the lines of longitude are called meridians, they are circles that go around the Earth through the North and South Pole vertically, uh, so East and West, as opposed to North and South, which is uh, latitude. And it splits the Earth into the Southern and Northern Hemispheres. Um, looking at the Prime Meridian, which is established in 1851 uh, by a group of a collection of countries uh, established um, in uh, London. And because it's London and established then, it goes through the Greenwich Observatory and uh, is a place or source or starting point of time, which is called Universal Time or UTC, or also called GMT, which is Greenwich Mean Time. So the international date line is the opposite or the other side to the prime meridian. All right. So in this basic diagram, we've got the Earth. All right. We have the Earth. And it's an oblate cephaloid, it's a sphere, three-dimensional circle, and it's with longitude, it is separated or shown through, through lines or meridians going from the North Pole to the South Pole and going around, right? So on this side, the, the, the behind side, this side right here, would be the prime meridian that runs through London and Greenwich and is the start of timekeeping basically and on the other side of that line okay we have the international date line so very simply we have um, 24 hours in the day okay round up um, obviously divided by two which is two halves the circle which is 180 degrees by two is 12 so 180 degrees is 12 hours let's say to the east and 180 degrees and 12 hours to the west because 12 plus 12 equals 24 the whole day so as the earth spins from west to east kind of clockwise what's going to happen is you're going to have the um sun rise and set but as the earth spins the international date line is the separation of time between calendar days. For example, on one side, let's say this side, if I shade it in, this side over here, okay, to the right or to the east of the of the the uh, in, international date line, also called the IDL, okay, is going to be let's say Monday. So various times in Monday based on location, right? Based on longitude. And on this side, let's do a different color. And to the west or this side, to the left or the west side, over here of the date line, you're going to be looking at Tuesday. So it's a day ahead. This side is a day ahead and this side is a day behind. Now why? Because this date line is a separation between two half the circle 180 degrees east and west and this point here so let's say you take hawaii so hawaii is right here 
Hawaii could be, let's say, 4 a.m. Okay, and over here in New Zealand, which is kind of the first larger country to get the sunrise and a new day, because it's a day ahead, right? So let's say it's going to be Tuesday. It'll be Tuesday morning, let's say 6 a.m. on Tuesday morning. Now, obviously, if you travel from Hawaii to New Zealand in a plane or a boat, or you want to swim, if you're a crazy swimmer, um, you're going to have to actually um, change your watch or your iPhone or whatever phone you have, change it to um, the new time or the local time in New Zealand. So you're actually going to lose a whole day. So you're going to lose all of Monday and start your time or change your time to the local time in New Zealand, which is 6 a.m. on Tuesday. And vice versa, if you're going to go from New Zealand to Hawaii over the IDL, right? If you're going to travel east, you actually lose time, or you actually gain time. You gain a whole day. You go from Tuesday, 6 a.m., to Monday in the morning. So you're going to actually gain a whole day. So you're going to plus 24 hours. Oh, no. 24 hours if you're going east. And if you're going to go west over the line, you're going to lose 24 hours. Why? Because 12 plus 12 is 24. You're going over a whole day. So in terms of New Year's Eve, for a lot of the planet that celebrates it on December 31st, it's kind of awesome because you can watch the New Zealand or the Sydney um, fireworks over the Opera House really early um, on New Year's Eve because they, they experienced the new year first. So they're in the next calendar year and you're still waiting for it to come on the, um, the Western Hemisphere right in america or europe so you can as the earth spins you can actually then experience all these different celebrations around the world you know paris and london and new york and then la and then last hawaii so you can get five or six different celebrations around the world celebrating new year uh on december 31st throughout that entire day which is kind of cool i live in america i'm calling my parents in england it's a five hour difference so i'm calling them at 6 45 uh, p.m uh, local time in New York and Eastern Standard Time because in England it's going to be New Year's Eve in 10 minutes or 15 minutes so I'm waiting for Big Ben to uh, chime which is kind of you know iconic so the IDL is 180 degrees east or west is the opposite to the prime meridian and this meridian right here is the 180 line now you would think that the uh, the date line would run exactly along the 180 degree meridian it doesn't why why is it zigzag why is it not going to be exactly along the 180 meridian well, the reason is you have land masses you have land masses and you have islands because it goes through majority of the pacific ocean which is huge um, you have different countries and different uh, areas of the world that can basically decide which time to be linked with. Now, it's basically a lot to do with economy and trade and business. Now, that this ocean is so big that really Hawaii is one of the principal, you know, obviously states of America, which they're going to obviously align with the uh, lower 48 and the American time zones, right? And be on the same day as America, even though it's, you know, uh, three hours behind LA and six hours behind uh, New York. It's still on the same time day as, as the United States. However, other islands that are dotted around the Pacific, they have chosen to either be on the this day so let's say tuesday the tuesday kind of economy and the, the 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 countries that are aligned with this day calendar day in terms of time so uh southeast asia japan um australia and australasia or oceana uh on this side and on this side which will be monday which will be i'll see the united states uh south america you know the the closest continents uh north america to 
um, the islands of the Pacific. Again, Hawaii is a good example. But the U.S., so it does actually zigzag. So if you're going to take a little look, it zigzags around Russia and the U.S. and the and the Aleutian Islands and the Bering Strait. And then it comes down and then it kind of like does a few zigzags and a big zigzag around the islands of Kiribati. Now these uh, islands, this has changed since 1995 and Kiribati actually was on the Monday time zone aligned with the United States, then decided to kind of jump ship and move the IDL, you know, a great, very large distance, you know, um, to the east to accommodate the islands of Kiribati into the uh, Australasian and southeastern economies over here. And then it kind of comes down and zigzags around like this. So it's not a perfect straight line, and it accommodates various islands. Now, the islands of Fiji are kind of like some islands are split in between as well, which is kind of awesome. But you have these self-guided and uh, decision-made uh, countries of where the IDL goes to align countries with different economies. So it gets really confusing if you actually are here in some islands and you have friends uh, in in this island up here. You have to, have to go, let's say you're on Monday, you travel north and pass over this IDL, which looks like a little line of, of parallels, like in long latitude. You'd go up, you go into a Tuesday, and then back to Monday. So you can actually <laughs> pretty much time travel on your on your watch as you pass over these different time zones and to your friend over here back in Monday. But, you know, the Pacific Ocean is, is a huge zigzag looking at going around different islands to accommodate where they want to be on the Monday time zone with certain countries or on the Tuesday time zone with certain countries. And that is why the IDL is both fascinating and awesome because of the, the, uh, the changes that happen not only on your clocks, uh, but also on countries choosing where they want to be. All right. Thanks for listening, guys.